Greetings gamers! Do you want to learn how to play Magic the Gathering, but don't know where to turn to learn? Or perhaps you're an experienced player looking to teach a friend without wanting to explain it all yourself. I'm Bearcat Gamer, and welcome to Bearcat Basics, Intro to Magic the Gathering, Part 1. Magic is a popular game among others created by Wizards of the Coast. In this video, I'll be explaining the cards themselves and how to use them properly using a dual deck Soren vs. Tybalt for reference. To start, every card can fit into one of three categories, lands, spells, and token. The easiest way to explain the relationship between these types is lands act as a type of currency by producing mana, while spells require mana to be played onto the field. Tokens would be like the receipts as they are played as a result of playing spells. Token cards are the least important type of card as they can be substituted with dice, coins, or any other objects you have that can identify a given token. With that said, let's cover lands. As you'll see on the back of every magic card, there are five colors. Six including colorless, but more on that later. Each of the five colors have what's called a basic land. White is represented by planes, and is a color of selflessness, strength in numbers, and a higher defense. Blue is represented by islands, and is a color of intelligence, with many counter magic to control the battle. Black is represented by swamps and is a color of selfishness and a willingness to sacrifice anything necessary for more power. Red is represented by mountains and is the color of emotion and they freely expresses haste and burn spells. And green is represented by forests and is the color of growth, buffing your mana source and creature strength. Basic lands are the only cards you're allowed more than four copies of in a deck. On the front of each card you'll see the name of the card on the top left above the artwork the type below the picture, as well as its subtype. All lands act as a source of mana, which is required to place spells from your hand. To activate a land, you tap it, or turn it sideways, to show that it's been used this turn. Only one land may be played a given turn. Excluding basic lands, make sure to read the text on all cards to make sure the effect of the card is met when it enters. At the bottom of each card is a text box that lists the features and or requirements of that particular card. For example, some lands may enter the battlefield tapped. Once a card is turned sideways, it cannot be used again this turn. Some land cards enter tapped. Some may give life or cost another land to be returned to your hand as it's played. As mentioned before, some lands offer colorless mana. It is important to mention that any color of mana may be used to pay for colorless, but colorless mana can only be used to pay for a colorless cost. When a land is tapped, it produces a mana of its color and is put onto the mana pool. From there, the mana is then used from the pool to pay for any spell you cast. With that said, now let's learn about the spells. Unlike lands, spells have a mana cost in the upper right corner. Each of the symbols represents one cost of its given color. A number in a gray circle means that you need any color of mana to pay for this part of the cost, so a card with a gray 2 and two flame symbols require four mana, two of which must be red mana, and the remaining two of any color. An X in a gray circle represents any number greater than zero, meaning after the rest of the cost is paid, you can pay as much mana of any color that you have remaining. For example, if you have a total of five mountains, and you have a card with a cost X red, you can play that from your hand as X can be any number one through four. Some spells have a divided cost, having one color over the other. This symbol means you can pay one or the other, but you don't have to pay both. With a two colorless over white symbol, for example, you can pay two of any color, in this case other than white, or a single white to pay for that cost. There are different types of spells. Most stay on the field, while others go to the graveyard or discard pile after they are done. With the exception of instant cards, only one card may be played at a time. Cards that stay in play are called permanents. These include creatures, planeswalkers, artifacts, enchantments, and auras. These cards are played above your land zone, called the permanent zone. When creature cards enter the battlefield, it arrives with a condition known as summoning sickness. This condition means that a creature cannot attack the turn it was placed on that side of the field. Some creatures have the ability Haste, which negates this condition. Several creatures have an ability written on the card, most of which clearly depicts how to use it. Others, you have to know how to play them. But more on these in another video. 
Creatures also have numbers on the bottom right of the card, which represents power and toughness. Power is how much damage you can deal, while toughness is how much damage you can withstand. Creature with zero toughness is sent to the grave. Like creatures, Planeswalker cards have a number at the bottom right, but they have only one, which represents loyalty counters. Planeswalkers have three abilities that either raise or lower this number. Unlike creatures, Planeswalkers do not have summoning sickness, therefore can play any of their abilities that are affordable for the first turn they are on the field. Any spell that can target a target player specifically can be used against Planeswalkers as well. Much like a creature's toughness, once a Planeswalker's loyalty reaches zero, it is sent to the graveyard. Once enchantment cards come into play, they affect the battle as long as it remains on the field, changing the rules of the game until they are removed from the field. These changes will be made clear if they affect all players, or your side only. Auras are an enchantment that equips to a designated creature. Once the creature an aura is attached to is sent to the grave, the attached aura is sent along with it. Artifact cards are played the same as all permanents. Equipment artifact cards then require an additional mana cost to add to a creature. Unlike auras, when a creature dies with an artifact attached to it, the artifact is unattached from the creature and remains on your side of the field. Sorceries and instants are resolved after they are played and sent to the grave. Unlike sorceries, instants can be played at any time during gameplay. Instant cards create what's known as a stack. Stacks will be covered in Intro to Magic Part 2, when I discuss the turn layout as well as how to start a game. Now that you have a better understanding of what the cards are and what they do, it's time to learn how to start a game and the turn structure as well as the general rules of gameplay. Thank you so much for watching. Link will be in the description for part two. For any inexperienced players who enjoys this series, I ask you to share this with your friends who want to learn how to play or even leave a comment that I may have missed. Until the next video, this is Bearcat Gamer, signing out.